Hello, welcome to another video on the Boss RC 600. So what I thought I would do is uh, lay down some guitar and lay down some bass uh, with the rhythm machine on here and show you how I've been using the machine to build a song. Let's go. Okay, so what I did here, um, excuse the uh, machine being on a slant, but it seemed to be the only way I could show the whole machine. Um, so what I'm going to do is go through and let, you may know this, you may not, but all of these buttons can be reconfigured, right? So the way it's set up is just like it says right here, is record and play stop. This would be track one. This would be track two. They're labeled here. Track three, if you hit the mode button, right, now you're in, it, 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 the lights did not change. But um, you are indeed have track four, five, and six. Same layout. Record, uh, stop, record, stop. Okay. Uh, if you hold down this track select button, right? Now you're in effect mode, and I will just, let's see what's on here. I think that's the low pass filter. What's here? Oh, this is the bass. is this some sort of weird thing these three here are for the uh, track effects these three right here are preset uh, for the input effects so I digress here is how I figured out to do a track first thing is I leave it laid out this way and I change it later and the reason is, is because um, I tried it the other way. I, try, I tried laying it out so I had one, two, three, four, five, six here, all six tracks, and then manipulating whether I wanted to re uh, program the button to record and then reprogram the button to just playback. And it was just a little bit more time-consuming. And it was easier for me to leave it laid out like like um, Boss laid it out. Um, and then change it after the fact. Uh, that seemed to, for my method, that worked great. So let's dive into this here and um, I'll show you. What we're going to do here is lay out a whole song, okay? So there's a couple important things that you got to realize. And before you record, right, um, this is our record play. So everything can be memorized per loop, okay, and per, um, per preset or whatever. So first thing, go into track one. Look at these settings. You got reverse off, one shot, in, in case you want to trigger something just once, off. Uh, pan, center, play, that, that's the play volume, works really well. Start, immediate, fade, okay, stop, immediate, do I want to go into overdub? The effects are on, here's where it gets important, multi we're going to set this to single, okay? Measure is free, meaning your loop can be any length. So however long you record, it can be. You can also set it to where you just want to do 16 bars or 8 bars or 4 bars or whatever. But for my purposes, you know, in my songs, usually the... Um, the the sections, they could be 8 bars, they could be 16. And I like to work that way. Uh, 
loop sync. This is a good one. On this first loop, I always leave it on. <laughs> I think. <laughs> uh, next page. Uh, tempo sync. Switch on, blah, 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 blah. Now, this track one, you can set uh, what instruments you want to go into the track. I'm just using one input here um, for guitar and bass. Okay, next thing. Uh, this is ready to go, essentially. So what we need to do, let's exit. Okay, what, we're, what we need to do is loop. You go to the next page, you can hit loop again. Rhythm. Okay, now, before I do that, this is the, this should start the rhythm, right? It does not. You have to press this. This. Who's going to do that? No, no. So, how do we fix that? Menu, okay? And we go to control right here. And we in mode one, we are in mode one. Pedal. This one here, you can't see it on the screen. It, this is pedal nine. It is set to all start stop. That is if I have a loop, right? So I do not have a loop yet, but I do want to hear some rhythm rhythm start rhythm start stop this is a great one now hey i got a metronome exit now if you want to change your tempo which of course you would want to we're at 120 you just hit the tap tempo. You can tap it in, but I never do that. Why? You know, just get to the tempo you want. Okay. Now, exit. Exit. Now I'm going to go to loop. Okay. Hit it twice. Back to rhythm. Here is where you can change everything, right? Okay, goofy. Now, I'm going to change the kits. In case you haven't heard these, you can hear. They get progressively cooler for my taste. The cajon is really cool sounding. Drum and bass. The R&B. This is the kit I am changing. Okay. Now, I'm going to hit the thing. switch one is right here. One, two, three, four, five, six, right here. Okay, seven, eight, nine. So, boss had the, this all start stop. But what we did was change this to just, it's just going to start the rhythm, okay? Okay, great. What we're going to do is we're going to pick a groove. We're going to pick a, and I'll show you a trick. In here. That's pretty cool, right? This is a good one. I like this. Except for that cowbell. How about no more cowbell? So you got... As you go along these things, 
you can find if you look. If you look hard. What I did here was I picked a rhythm and I found a real simple, easygoing background type rhythm, okay? Like this. It's a little Latin y or whatever. Yeah. So I found this. Here, I'll show it to you. Jeez. Acoustic bassa. I have it on the R&B kit, okay? And this is important to remember. Uh, you know, you might want to you might want to write these things down when you do if if you follow this method. So check this out. Here's an interesting thing. If I go into menu output right here, routing. Okay, input, rhythm, and I page over here. It, I don't know if you can see it, but on the bottom, it is saying, uh, this is your different outputs, okay? So this is where you can route your mics and your instruments and your rhythm to the main. Everything's on, okay, including my guitar. This is what's where it gets interesting. Output, rhythm out, right? This second one, press it, it goes to the loop. Pretty cool. So now, when I record here on track one, this rhythm sound is going to go in here. In my other video, I demonstrated the settings when I record. And I go through here, I'm on track one, and I'm looking at, I got single, I got it to free, like I said, I got the loop sync on. Let's exit out of there. Now, record. Look at the second one here, this is very interesting. Quantize, I turn this on. Ah, a bug in this system with Boss. You have to stop the rhythm. And there's a reason for that. Um, so I turn this quantize on the measure. Okay. Now, pretty much, I believe, there might be a setting I forgot. But <laughs> at any rate... So, before we do this, um, I just want to say, uh, what, how I'm recording the Strat is I have this uh, Joyo American pedal, which is like a, you know, it's like a Fender amp simulator. And, uh, you know, no effects on it or anything, but it's very versatile. I love this pedal. And I have that plugged into a, um, a Keeley, um hook spring reverb and what I'm going to do I'm showing showing them on the screen I'll show them on the screen so anyways that is my guitar signal going into this boss and it sounds like I don't have the reverb on okay just a little tremolo So now, theoretically, what will happen when we go to record this track? If you can see, you can see the red light blinking, right? Theoretically, what's going to happen is when I hear record, it's going to start recording on the bar line, okay? 
for YouTube, right? Okay. Now, that's the stop. Check this out. If I turn off the rhythm while this is playing. Ah. This is a neat trick. So, because I set the output routing uh, for the rhythm machine to go into the track itself, okay, into the loop itself, it is recording that little rhythm, which is cool, okay? So now we have just this rhythm. Also, if you press these rhythm, The rhythm is totally in sync. Uh, you can't really tell because both tracks are playing, but but check it out. <clears throat> I will go to loop, right? Hit it twice, rhythm. Let's say I change a kit. Now it's playing both, okay, which is cool. So what else do we need? This is the intro to the song. Let's put a bass on it. Very important, you know, when, you're, when I've been making these loops with the songs, it's super important to tune every time you record, you know, unless your guitars are in perfect tune all the time. Do yourself a favor. If you're going to save these like I do, tune. <laughs> okay. Enough of the tuning lecture. Let's play the track. Now, it's just playing, right? not recording. When I hit it again, it is going to record the bass. One other thing is that I had the rhythm still going in to the track, so it recorded it twice. Mistake. But, nonetheless, we now have our first track done. For me, that's all I need. Um, so let's move on. And let me move the 
machine. We're going to record track two, okay? Now the reason I'm keeping this simple is because when I play this song live, right, I'm going to be playing guitar. we go. And you notice right away how, how clear this machine really is, you know. Let's record this bridge. We're going to put this on track three. There's a, a mark back function. I've never used it. Uh, but supposedly you could set a mark back point to just punch in where, wherever you want to go in this loop. You can see it going around right here, but I'll just wait. And uh, it's in overdub mode. that too uh, pretty careful with the volume of 
the instruments as they go in. So you got a nice smooth layer going in here because when you go play over it, you don't want things like sticking out. Yeah, you can hear the two basses, but whatever, it's fine. Okay, so from there, so remember that before we uh, switch uh, uh, track one, two, three, right here, the way you do it, the way that Boss has this set up is now you would just track select, and now you can see can see the reflection here uh, these are have all turned blue which means no loop exists okay when they when you get a loop when you record it they turn white okay so that's a pretty cool feature I think you can switch the um, you can switch those lights to uh, different colors if you like I believe so <clears throat> but I think Boss did a great job with, you really do have a readout at all times of what's going on. And not only can you tell with a, not only can you tell with the tempo going here and then the loop going around, you know, the rhythm and the tap tempo, those lights are flashing. These are blue right now. You cannot see this on the video. It's a bummer. This is bright red. When it is in mode one, it's white. When you go to mode two, red. Okay? So this part, we'll start. Ah. That is still set to all start and all stop. So we're going to change this right now. And uh, this is fairly easy. Go to menu, hit menu again, control. I don't know if you can see this too well. This is number here. Let me move this over slightly. Okay, so if you can see the screen here, that middle one is mode two. We're going to go to mode two and Remember, our pedals are 1 through 9. 7, 8, 9 is up here. This is number 9. We're going to change this to rhythm. Start, stop. So, 9. See, if you can see the screen, it says all start, stop. Let me just do that. So... Scroll through, input effects. See what's cool about the, the rhythm, start, stop. Now, see this is blinking in time too. So, now, when you heard me hit it before, what it was doing was starting the loop and the rhythm. Now it's just going to start the rhythm so that when I go to record my next track, I'm in, right? Uh, switch this to track four now. Where, let's look at track four settings. Still, it's on multi. Of course. We're going to set it to single. Loop sync is set to on. Um, whatever, let's go for it. Okay. What happens here is I turn these all to loop sync off. What the loop sync really is doing, uh, 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 there's some voodoo with it, but um, what it's really supposed to do is that if you stop a loop, loop one on bar eight, right, and you go to loop two, loop two would then be on bar eight. In other words, they're all running in sync, right? Which is not what we want. We want them to start as we press on bar one of each loop.
Ok This is now track 4 Ok Still haven't figured out what we're going to do with those extra two bars Probably shouldn't have written the song that way <laughs> Ok So we got track 4 Now we're, it goes back to a, a verse I think we're ok Let's start that so Rhythm's getting boring, right? Okay, track five, which is the outro to the song. It's like its own section. So that's what's so cool about this machine, is you can do all your different sections of your song. getting somewhere look at that I don't know if you can see it but that says 18 bars What that means to me is that when I was having trouble with this other one, right, loop sync, I record with the loop sync on in single mode. As I go along creating tracks, I would suggest after you get the track right, turn the loop sync off on the track you just recorded. Suggestion. I think that I think that will solve our issue here. Okay, so we'll play it again. Let's go from here. It's still recording. I turn the vine down on the bass all the way. And the, it's not recording the rhythm anymore, so instead of starting and stopping, I'm just going to wait till it comes around. Because I missed the first bar. To me, this works easier than the mark back. I don't know. Maybe for you it's different. For me, it's really easy. Like Let's move on, because now things are going to get interesting. Okay, I guarantee it. If you're bored, uh, don't be. Hopefully you found that, you know, somewhat interesting, and um, 
entertaining. What was entertaining for me was that I did forget to turn the loop sync off as I was recording all the tracks. And I do recommend that because apparently with this machine, is what, what is happening is that as you go along and you record, you know, track two, track three, track four, et cetera, et cetera, it's, it's trying to sync. If you have that loop sync on, it's trying to sync to the previous track. It might even be trying to sync to the first one. I do not know. It's mysterious. And why you have to have the loop sync on to record is still a mystery to me. Nonetheless, if you you when you record your track, um, we're still in this output. But as you look at the track, right? Track five, single mode. I did get it to do eighteen measures, and um, but I had to turn the loop sync off on all the previous tracks I recorded, which is fine. So now, the next step here is now we have a song laid out, right? But you will notice uh, that this is still set up, right, for track one, track two, track three, and then if I want to go to my bridge, i got to hit this. No, we're not going to do that. We're going to re- Program the buttons because it's easy. What I'm going to do is we're going to go and we're going to reprogram the buttons to reflect how I want this to go so I can lay out the song on all six buttons right here, right? Six switches. And the way it'll, it'll go is intro, verse, chorus, solo. Uh, the last one is the outro. And I just, every time I need to go back to the verse, I go to two. Every time I need to, uh, you know, these other sections, this song isn't really like a verse-chorus song. It's always this uh, verse, this, this thing's a bridge, this thing's a solo, this thing's an outro. So here's how we're going to do that. Instead of having to hit the track select and change modes, that's what's important. We don't want to change modes. So menu, you go to, you hit menu twice. You go to control, mode one, which is what we want. Pedal one, that's this one. Check this out. So now you can see it says, currently it's track one, record play. All you have to do is go past the record, past moment play, to play stop. Now, guess what? Dig it. So, there you go. Now, what we do is exit, pedal 2. That is set to track one stop. Guess what? Let's do track one. Wait a minute. I think I, I went the wrong way. <laughs> track one. No. So, God. No, I was going the right way. Track. We're going to change it to track two. Play stop. Okay, so now, on upward and onward here, pedal three. Now, right now it's set to track two, but we want it to be track three, just play. So you just go through here, it does, it's not that far. Uh, now it's track three, play stop. Okay, exit. Pedal four, same thing. But now, remember, we're doing track four. So you go up to track four, past the record, 
past moment play. The first one is play stop one. I love this. I love uh, play stop. <laughs> Boring, right? Okay. Number five. This is track. It's now going to be track five. By the way, this is very, very easy to do. And you can do this per memory, okay? It doesn't, you can also do, you can set your whole uh, uh, RC600 up this way. But I don't do that because maybe you want song one to be one thing and you want your buttons to be song two a different way. And there, there are some people doing very interesting things like that. Okay. So this is now. Okay. And that's it. That is it. Now, check this out. I'll do it very quickly. Okay, that's track one. Let's go to the first early. called Guilty Me. It was uh, Laura and I wrote this and it's on our fourth, third record. Here's the solo section. Now, now you can see what I'm talking about with this, with the RC600. Once you do this, right, it's just going on. Now this is the track that I wanted to be 18 bars, but I, I accepted 16 just to get through this video. Here's what I'm gonna I would do to that. in the song is that there's an extra two bars of D minor, okay? It's similar to the intro, but not the same. But anyways, I just triggered the intro for a bar or two and then switch back to my verse. Now, uh, in our arrangement, after this one, after this verse, it goes directly to the outro. Our outro is here on track five. I know this bossa nova, uh, mellow, uh, cheesy uh, lounge beat is probably driving you crazy at this point, but uh, it's just there for kicks and to keep time. And I'll show you the next trick I got up my sleeve, which is song almost done. So the next trick 
that I discovered that uh, I think is really fun. Now, we put up with that bossa beat for a long time. So let's add, let's spice this whole track up with a different beat. Now, remember, I recorded that bossa beat to all the tracks, okay? So I'm going to hit loop. You hit it twice, rhythm, okay? Now, we can pick anything we want to go along with that. Mississippi Queen or something. So here is the um, the easiest thing I need I, I I know to do, okay, for me would be to that I recorded on on number one leave it there when my when the verse comes in I want to go to this beat here and I'm going to layer rock eight beat two drum and bass kit pattern a <laughs> I'm going to layer that onto track two okay I I'm not going to record it on the track. It's going to play along with track two. Here's how we do that. We go to, we have to put in a sign. And we need, we're going to need two, well, actually, the first assign you do, you do menu, uh, and we're going to do assign. That's right here. Okay. Assign. Eh, let's start with two, just because it's on track two. It doesn't have to be, but let's... Okay, source, track, two. Track two, play stop. Okay, this is important. So it's set, track two, play stop. This first one is switch on. Uh... The source, not momentary, a toggle. If it's momentary, it'll just do it for a second. It's momentary. Okay. So now here's where you get to the fun stuff. The, what do we want this assign to do? So if you hold down the knob and turn it, right, it gives you all these different choices. There are hundreds and hundreds so I'm kind of scrolling through them whatever take your time you can press down the knob and it'll go a little bit faster rhythm stop rhythm start okay 
So. Okay. Once this rhythm starts playing, I've noticed, right? Because this is set up as as all start on rhythm, right? Which is fine, and I I like it that way because it what it means is no matter what you're pressing your rhythm's going to keep going, and you don't have to mess with it. But remember how I left a sign one open. A sign two is a sign to track two. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to a sign one, and it's going to be switch on. We're doing track one. Play stop is the source. Toggle. Let's see if this works. Target. I'm going to go way, way. I didn't do this before. I didn't do it as fast. But here we go. We're going to get in there. Mike, it's rhythm, rhythm stop. Yeah. Check it out. That's my original Bossa Nova beat, but it's not playing the rhythm right here now. As long as I don't change anything going on here, right? If I don't change anything in my rhythm setting, as I go through the tracks, it'll just stay on that rhythm, you know? I like that. So, but, when it goes to the next section, uh, what if we were to, perhaps, try to change, let's change the pattern. And this is fairly straightforward. Uh, so, that would be track three. Exit. We're still in the assign section. Here, you can see it. Let's do a sign three. And remember, you're going to do, make sure the switch is set to on. And this is our source, track three. So when I hit play stop and I toggle, it's going to do whatever we want it to do, which is what's cool about this. So now... I already messed with the play, start, play, uh, rhythm, start, rhythm, stop. This is all effects. There's rhythm, start, stop. Okay, rhythm, start, rhythm, stop. Rhythm level. If you keep going, check this out. It's a little bit further. Uh, auto record. Okay. Rhythm variation. This is it. So check this out. I thought C. Now if I hit... At least it's giving you a little variation. Yeah, it's a little corny. Some now sometimes these these fills really line up, and then sometimes they. Now you'll notice that when I go back, if I go back to my verse, right. 
it's still going to stay on C, on variation C, unless we tell it not to, right? So what is smart to do is to exit. Now we've taken up a sign one, two, and three. Let's do a sign four as, or maybe not. Let's go beyond that. We'll go to six, okay? Assign six, let's say, because this, I don't know, it makes sense to me this way. So what we're going to do is we're going to assign track two here in play stop, okay? It's always going to go to variation A, okay? So we go way, way, way. You, remember, you press this button down and turn it. It doesn't really... work that well but we're getting that okay you can also switch by the way you can do the variation or you can change the kit which is kind of cool too i've done that many times so now okay so that's variation a watch this I have to be okay here's how you can see it go to loop rhythm watch you can say you can see it's on variation C and the, and the fills are even lining up I mean Again, you you have to be, uh, you know. I don't know why it's so hard. It's it's not really that hard. Okay, assign six. Is rhythm variation, but it's track. I have it set to play to track one play stop so that is definitely whatever it was C okay now what I'm going to do is out. When our loop comes around, I'm going to hit two, and hopefully we're going to go back to variation A. Did it. It's like magic. Now, now remember, these are not in sync, so when I go to hit this, going to the, the first bar of this section, which is really cool, because it means that your sections can be not only different lengths, but you can trigger them at will, and you're going to come down on beat one.
Now my next section in here, I like this beat. It's a solo section. I mean, you know, the cymbal crashes, the whatever. It fits the solo section perfectly. After the solo section, we go back to this number two here, which is the the, the actual form, the, the verse we're calling it. And now remember, I, I messed that bar up. <laughs> That's the rhythm start stop now. So, it started variation A on its own. Okay. Um, this is a cool trick, right? Um, I've seen... Uh, different people uh, explain this, and I, in fact, learned this on YouTube from, uh, I believe it's the guy Tej or the guy in England, John Paul, which I highly recommend their videos. But um, this, this method, sometimes it's buggy, but you, like, what I did was just go back over my settings just to make sure that I it wasn't user error you know and I gotta tell you everything I've seen on here that uh, you know things whatever bugs this that and the other thing uh, things not being in sync most of the time it is user error I I'm convinced I'm convinced. I, to me, this is a great machine, and it is functioning properly. And I did the firmware update, and it seems to be functioning even better than it was before. So with that said, let's go into this last bit, okay? The last bit is... When uh, we perform this song, this section kind of we kind of raise it up a little bit, you know. So I still have an assign. I got many assigns left. Number five, I intentionally I think left blank, and I did. So let's just try to do a ver a rhythm variation on. This will be track five placed up toggle next page target is going to we're going to go all the way to rhythm variation and where is it they're after the variation is after mic mutes and then it does this thing for individual tracks and you will see it arrive here shortly there it is now, this is kind of confusing, but I did see somebody hook up a, um, a uh, 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 the continuous controller, you know, expression pedal on the back here. And with the expression pedal, you can actually go through all the variations, which is kind of cool. And you can do it on the fly. So let's just experiment for a second. Let me try variation B. I think it's a uh, Nazareth hair of the dog. We do not want that uh, more cowbell. No. 
I think D is similar. <laughs> it is. So let's go back to our favorite C. That's going to work. Uh, you may notice, too, that when you change the variations, right, because I have rhythm, I'll show you, oops, I have rhythm uh, set Where's loop twice, rhythm. If you go through to your other pages of rhythm, you can put the intro on, which is kind of cool. Uh, and you can do that if you're gonna if you're gonna loop on the fly, you know. And you you don't you can have a count in, right? And and it'll play a little one bar or whatever it is. And then the ending, I don't do, I don't need that. Fill. And then the variation, measure, loop end. I keep this set on measure. Because what ends up happening, it's a little weird. But watch. Let's see. Now the reason it did that is because... It was set on C, this is now A, okay? And it does the fill when you hit the button. But as this comes around, watch, I'm gonna go to the ending, the outro section, which is number five here, okay? Here we go. Three, four, one. Get it? it So put that crash in there. It didn't do a fill. But it's doing variation C, which is fine. I mean, it just fits like a glove. Which again, I I think, you know, because these are songs that Everything is usually 8, 16 bars, 24 bars, whatever. Uh, to get out of this song, you know, you can hit, you can have it fade, which is what I'm going to do. That's an, a, a neat little trick, right? Uh, loop. Play. Track 5. It says so. Can you see that? Track five, play, fade time. Two measures. Okay. Uh, where is that? Okay, so it's set to two measures. Exit. Track five. Let's hit that. Check this out. Start, stop. Immediate fade. So what this does is it, as soon as the loop comes around, right? Actually, I don't even think it has to go all the way around, but when I hit stop, that's the stop mode. When I hit stop, it's going to fade. Two measures. One, two. I want it to fade on the one chord. important at this point at this juncture probably should have done this earlier but um, 
we are going to press exit and enter together. Right. This is very important because if you do not do this, you hit right and enter. It says on the screen, right, enter. Executing. Everything that we have just done is now saved. The first time it executes, it takes a little while because it's it's remembering everything that we recorded. It is now relatively safe. I, I would say with these machines, nothing is safe. But, you know, just like a computer. But, because it is a computer. So, uh, if you hit loop twice, right here, this fourth, it says name. Select that. And now, this song is called Guilty Me. Guilty. This one moves the cursor. Okay. Guilty. Guilty 15. Why not? Guilty. to me, enter, and exit at the same time, right, enter, right, executing, guilty me is now number 15, and it is saved, okay, the only thing that I ever do at this point, the last thing that I do besides write, save, name it, uh, I do that, and then I press hold down. Now I'm in uh, effect mode, okay? So this is, this is kind of cool. So the first thing you have, to, to look at your effects, you hit loop twice. And you can see right here, maybe, I raised this up so you could see the whole thing. This first one is for the uh, input effects, and the second one's for the track effects. And the way Boss has it laid out, and this is fine by me because I don't need all, you know, a whole bunch. But I haven't gotten that far into it. This is still new to me. So you've got th the three... Uh, so the, these are their preset effects, right? So all you have to do is you can see when I turn it on, if you look at the screen, you can't see it. Anyways, right here, let's get a little tighter again. I was trying to be slick. Okay, that's a little bit better. Okay, so uh, low pass filter, band pass filter, phaser, you can hear. I noticed with the phaser, I slow it down, I just back it off. Oh, I have my tremolo on, too. You can almost get, with the, with the tremolo, you can almost get a univibe song. Okay, sound. I like the phaser. I, 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 I just keep putting that on. Now, this is, this is that bass sound.
there's a there was a, a guy on YouTube who, you know, he used he used the harmonizer in here instead of the instead of this guitar to bass preset, and I thought that was pretty cool. And then if you add a little gain to that, I'll show you what I mean. Uh, exit. Now this is showing your effects. You can, it's so bright. Whatever. Uh, this is number two. It says G to B, which is guitar to bass. Uh, oops, that's adjusting. So you choose over here. This is the. Sustainer, auto riff, you know. Some of these, you know, like robot. Uh, it's not. I haven't gotten anything cool out of it yet. The vocoder, I have not messed with. The oscillator, the preamp, for me, <clears throat> I have a Boss Katana, and th that amp sounds pretty good. This to me, does not do it. However, the distortion sounds pretty good. Not distorted, but... That's dry. That's without touching it. That's boss, boss's preset. You know. And it really fits well over the track. <coughs> so I'll show you what I mean. Hold it down. There's track two. But it's cool because you can use your volume control. Thank you. 
trying to get back to the effects. idea uh, it's super fun you know and then uh where was i with these effects okay i'm still on the effects page i was just gonna, i was just showing uh let's just do a reverb because this is this song doesn't really need much this is some kind of goofy effect, right? Uh, so this is now C. They have A, B, A, B, C, D. What's weird is I haven't figured that out. Somebody else made a video on, on that, I think. So let's just deal with this one. It's on Pattern Slicer. Which is really cool for a track. There's delay. The reverbs are just okay on this thing. I like the chorus. Whatever. Hey. But what's so cool, you know, is it like you can hit it on the fly, you know. Here's my... Okay for a gig, right? Okay. I think the boost works great. Okay, the last thing. So I got those laid out for this song. That is perfect. Let's, uh, if you want to, do you want to hear the track effects? No. We need to stop. 